Hey, people. It's Nas talking. Now, I'd like to face to face Africa because they were the ones who told me about this story and this is where I'm using the source from. So, here it goes. The sad story of the Afro-Argentine soldier who became a beggar after fighting for her country. Mario Remedios del Val was a war heroine whose identity was erased from history until recently. She was present in many battles but in very few history books. Known as the Madre de la Patria, mother of the homeland, the Afro-Argentine camp follower turned soldier participated in the Argentine War of Independence. She did not only lose her entire family during the war but was wounded, captured and imprisoned. She even escaped being executed seven times during the war. But when she returned home to Buenos Aires after the war, she was shunned and had to beg for arms to survive until one of the generals under whom she had fought came to a raid. This is her story. Born in Buenos Aires around 1768, Maria was one of the few women who fought in the wars of independence. With her husband and two sons, she accompanied the Army of the North, which had been deployed by the United Provinces of the Rio de la Plata to free the Argentine Northwest and the Upper Peru, present-day Bolivia, from Spain. Maria was among other women or camp followers who were recruited to follow the troops and provide food and nursing services, carry arms and gather intelligence. Maria would end up doing more than, than that she, uh, as she participated in several battles. She was present in the battles of Huacui, 20th of June, 1811, and the army's subsequent retreat to Jujoy, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, the exodus from Jujoy, 23rd of August, 1812, the victories at Tucumán, 24th September, 1812, and Salta, 20th of February 1813 and the defeats at Vilcapugio 1st of October 1813 and Oyahuma 14th November 1813 record show. Before the Battle of Tucumán, she asked General Manuel Belgrano if she could tend the troops who had fallen in the front lines, but Belgrano refused, saying that women were not supposed to work at the front. Maria went ahead to do what she had been asked not to do. Belgrano, who was moved by her commitment and loyalty, later recognized her with the rank of captain in the army. Army. She was not lucky in the Battle of Ayahuma, when she, where she was shot and taken prisoner by the Spanish forces. While in captivity, she helped scores of prisoners escape, and when the Spanish forces realized this, she was sentenced to be publicly flogged for nine consecutive days. When Maria escaped and came back to the army to help treat the wounded, she was with the army until the end of the conflict in 1918. Not much was known about her after the conflict until 1826, when she applied for compensation for services for her family offered during the Argentine War of Independence. Authorities deny her claim. Weak and not in good health to work, Maria resorted to begging for arms in the city of Buenos Aires. Her situation changed in August 1827 when Argentine military officer Juan Jose Viamonte recognized her in the streets and petitioned the legislature on her behalf to provide her with a pension. Other generals testified that Maria had indeed served as a guerrilla fighter who first treated the wounded before getting shot and imprisoned in battle. Later, her recognition as an infantry captain, as well as the corresponding pension, was un unanimously approved by the legislature. Le she would later be compensated as a sergeant major of the cavalry before being placed in inactive status with full salary that matched her rank in 1830, reports said. Maria went ahead to receive a pension until she passed away in 1847. In 1944, Buenos Aires named a street in her honor, but Maria's bravery, patriotism, and selfless spirit of service was soon forgotten by almost every Argentine until recently when scholars and activists began to recognize the tremendous roles of people who had been ignored in the founding of the country because of their race or gender. November 8th has been celebrated in her honor since 2013 as National Day of Afro Argentines and African Culture. Now, there's a lot to talk about, and I want to reference it. Now, some people who may be listening to this may not know, but Argentina is a very is one of the whitest countries in South America, and that is because Argentina committed a holocaust or mafia against their black population, exterminating them, using sending them to war repeatedly to kill them off, putting denying them health care until many of them died of disease, and eventually many of the remaining black women were forced to just marry white men because that was the only men left, and eventually. That would, it would just leave them to be sort of bred out what was left of the black population. And this, I'm going to also link this into the video I did about CRISPR Saddocks. And I, because he was also a celebrated war hero, well, to some, to some degree, who served the United States and fought in their war of independence. And black people who had done that did not get anything in return for that. In fact, is the country doubled down on slavery and became even more vicious towards black people as time went on. And this is the thing I want to say, is that 
black people have fought for, for many countries, their colonial powers, hoping for that if they go in the army and fight, they will prove that they are equal citizens and get rewarded with being treated as human beings. And more often than not, not only do they not get treated, they are denied any of the rewards that will come with their military service, like pensions and the GI Bill or stuff like that, recognition. And in many cases, like in Argentina and in the United States, the treatment becomes much, much worse. And even here, there's a lot of parallels here. Naming a street in her honor. That sounds like last year, 2020, when they said to honor all the, uh, the black people who were killed, they put Black Lives Matter on the street. They did all these little gimmicks like removing, like I don't know, furniture set companies or mat mattress companies removing the term master bedroom. But no one would give actual justice like end with the anti-lynching bill or prosecute police. I mean, even when people say, oh, well, George Floyd got, uh, I mean, Derek Chauvin got prosecuted. That was only because of a worldwide and nationwide backlash calling for justice. If not, there would not have been that. And for many others, we won't get that justice. Now, I've commented on this. So anyway, I'm going to leave the links, this and the links to my videos. So please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. If you want to support this channel, leave my GoFundMe in the description. If you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I'll leave it there as well. If you want to buy one of my t-shirts, I'll leave it there as well. Peace.